Every level of battle rifle explained. Level 1. Bad. Imagine it's 1941. You're a young soldier in the freezing mud of the Eastern Front, handed a brand new rifle that's supposed to change everything. You pull the trigger and nothing happens. The bolt jams solid. You smack it, curse under your breath, and watch your buddies with bolt actions keep firing while you're stuck wrestling your own gun. These are the battle rifles that sounded great on paper but tripped over their own feet the moment real combat started. Clunky, fragile, or just plain unreliable, they're the ones that make you appreciate every rifle that came after. That was the reality for the German Gewehr 41. Mauser designed it to be Germany's first semi-auto battle rifle, but oh man, it was a disaster in disguise. It had this weird gas trap system that clogged with dirt faster than you could say Russian winter. Heavy, complicated to make, and it hated cold weather. Soldiers ditched them whenever they could grab something simpler. Honestly, holding a Gewehr 41 feels like carrying a science experiment that forgot to study war. I have to admit that Gewehr 41 wasn't a lack of innovation, it was innovation ahead of its time, but poorly executed. The designers simply weren't there yet. Still, it wasn't alone down here. Japan's Hawa Type 64 had similar growing pains, super low production and way too delicate. Egypt's Hakim was basically a Swedish design that never quite fit their needs. The American Peterson rifle in .276 never even made it past prototypes, and the Soviet AVS-36 rattled itself apart after a few magazines. Level 2, Decent. Level 2 is where things actually start working most of the time. These rifles won't embarrass you on the range, and in a pinch, they'll get the job done, but they still feel like first drafts. A little awkward, a bit heavy, and you're always aware they could be better. These are like your reliable friend who shows up just five minutes late and with a weird haircut. The leader here is the FG-42 from Germany. Designed for elite paratroopers during World War II, this thing was wild for its time. Lightweight, full power 8mm rounds on semi or full auto, and it even had a side-loading magazine so you could shoot prone without looking like a turtle. German Fallschirmjäger loved it because it let them jump with something that actually fought back hard after landing. It wasn't perfect, expensive, a bit fragile, and only a couple thousand were made, but man, it pointed the way forward. Holding an FG-42 feels like touching a secret prototype that history almost forgot. This rifle is decent level because it was immensely complex and expensive to manufacture and crucially practically uncontrollable in full auto fire due to its light weight. It was a Ferrari in a world that needed tractors. It defined the term special purpose. While it didn't succeed as a general service weapon, its genius is undeniable, inspiring others to look beyond basic rifle design. A few others hang out at this level too. Denmark's Madsen LAR was smooth but rare. The American M1941 Johnson had that cool recoil system and saw action with Marines in the Pacific. The Gewehr 43 improved on the G41 but still felt rushed. And some Swiss K31s got converted to semi-auto just to play in this league. They're all decent. Level 3, Reliable. Level 3 is the sweet spot where you stop worrying about your rifle and start trusting it. These battle rifles just work, day in, day out, mud, sand, or snow. They're not flashy, but they show up, hit where you aim, and never complain. This is the level where soldiers finally breathe a sigh of relief. The rifle that rules this tier is the Set Me Model C from Spain. Born in the 1950s, this was the grandfather of the famous G3 family. Roller delayed blowback, tough steel construction, and it just shrugs off abuse. Spanish troops carried it for decades, and it became a symbol of set-it-and-forget-it reliability. Its simplicity in construction, relying on stamped steel and a minimal number of major parts, made it highly economical while maintaining phenomenal reliability. It laid the groundwork for your most favorite rifles in history, proving that cost-effectiveness and durability could be perfectly merged. Its ergonomics aren't perfect, the charging handle slaps your hand sometimes, but when you need a rifle that keeps running after everyone else has quit, the Set Me is your guy. 
It's like that old pickup truck that starts every morning no matter what. A handful of others live comfortably here too. Italy's Beretta ARX200 is super modular and dead reliable in tough environments. The American Keltec RFB and Desert Tech MDRX both bring bullpup compactness without sacrificing toughness. And Chile's Famea SG542 is basically a Swiss design built to South American standards. If you want a battle rifle that feels like a best friend rather than a project, Level 3 is where you shop. Level 4. Competent. Now we're cooking. Level 4 is the middle class of battle rifles. Balanced, practical, and honestly good enough for most jobs on the planet. They're lighter, handier, and more user-friendly than anything below. You'd happily take one of these into a fight and not feel undergunned. This is where good becomes really good. The standout here is the CZ Brand 2BR from the Czech Republic. Modern, clean, and stupidly versatile. It's got ambidextrous controls, quick change barrels, and it just feels right in your hands. Czech Special Forces love it because it works flawlessly with optics, suppressors, whatever you throw at it. Accuracy is excellent, recoil is tame, and it looks sharp doing it. The Bren 2BR is proof that you don't need to be the most famous rifle to be one of the best daily drivers out there. And when you're a small country competing against giants, you need a weapon that absolutely cannot fail. And that's exactly what Czech produced. But this tier has serious contenders. Belgium's FN 1949, better known as the SAFN, was a post-war classic that served everywhere. Israel's IWI Tavor 7 brings bullpup compactness with zero compromises. Yugoslavia's Zastava M77 was rugged and affordable. And the American Robinson Armament XCRM lets you swap calibers like changing socks. All of them are rifles you'd grab without hesitation. Solid, smart, and right in the heart of what a battle rifle should be. Level 5. Excellent. This is where things get serious. These are excellent in the truest sense. Proven in combat, respected by professionals, and capable of handling anything you ask. They're not perfect, but they've earned their scars and their stories. This is the level of rifles that soldiers actually missed when they were replaced. The leader is the classic M14 from the United States. Issued in the late 1950s, it was America's attempt to replace the Garand, and for a while, it worked beautifully. Walnut stock, 7.62 punch, and that satisfying ping when empty. Vietnam-era Marines swore by it for reaching out across rice paddies. Sure, its initial failure as a general infantry rifle was due to its length, weight, and the fact that its full-auto capability was almost entirely uncontrollable. However, it refused to die when the U.S. forces realized they needed to reach out past 400 yards in places like Afghanistan, the M14 platform, with its accuracy and power, was pulled back out of storage and reclassified as a designated marksman rifle. It is the embodiment of American tradition, powerful, accurate, but perhaps a bit stubborn in its design. A few others stand tall at this level too. The original 1950s Armalite AR-10 was light years ahead of its time. Israel's IWI Galil Ace in 7.62 NATO is basically an AK on steroids, tough and accurate. France's Moss 4956 served quietly but proudly for decades. And the Soviet SVT-40 brought semi-auto firepower to the Great Patriotic War when it desperately needed it. Level 6. Elite. The Big Boys. Level 6 are elite rifles built for special forces, snipers, and missions where failure isn't an option. Precision, modularity, and sheer performance define this tier. These are the rifles you see in night vision footage, quietly doing work that changes battles. The undisputed king here is the HK417 from Germany, also known as the G28 in sniper config. This thing is a beast wrapped in precision. Recoil is soft, accuracy is surgical, and it eats any ammo you feed it. Its excellence stems from taking the proven design of the AR platform and replacing the contentious direct impingement system with a flawless short-stroke gas piston. This change drastically increases reliability while maintaining the platform's inherent accuracy. 
This design allows the HK417 to function with military-grade dependability while delivering sub-MOA precision, effectively bridging the operational gap between a general infantry rifle and a dedicated sniper rifle. German KSK, British sharpshooters, and countless elite units worldwide trusted because it simply never lets you down. It's expensive, meticulously built, and engineered to outperform almost everything else on the field. Add a good optic and suppressor, and you've got a rifle that dominates from 50 meters to 800. This elite tier featured other genuinely exceptional weapons. The LMT MWS, adopted as Britain's L129A1, is a modular masterpiece loved by UK forces. Switzerland's SIG SG510, also known as the STGW57, was insanely well-made and accurate. The brand new American SIG XM7 Spear is already proving itself in the US. And Italy's Beretta BM59 gave the M14 an Italian upgrade that aged like fine wine. Level seven, GOAT. And here we are. But before we get into the details, I want to appreciate you for making it all the way here. You clearly enjoy this kind of chaos as much as I do, so like this video, hit that subscribe button, and come back for the next one. Now, let's finish this. Level 7 is the absolute peak of battle rifles, greatest of all time. The rifles that armed entire alliances, won wars, and still turn heads at the range today. Iconic, influential, and flat-out unbeatable in any way possible. If Battle Rifles had a Hall of Fame, this is it. The undisputed GOAT in this level is the FNFAL from Belgium. You can call it the right arm of the free world, and you have a good reason to do that. Adopted by over 90 countries, from the UK to Australia to South Africa, seeing service on every continent and in countless conflicts, this is the rifle that rules them all. Because it solved the problem every military faced, you needed something accurate, something durable, something your soldiers could maintain without advanced training, and something that wouldn't fail when it mattered most. The FAL delivered all of that. It just showed up, did the job, and kept doing the job across decades and in every environment you could throw at it. That's just what happens when a rifle is designed with brutal practicality in mind. Its genius lies in its simplicity and its adjustable gas regulator, allowing soldiers to literally tune the gun to their specific environment, be it the dusty desert or the freezing tundra. This gun has survived in conditions that destroyed lesser weapons. Lightweight for its power, easy to maintain, and that tilt-bolt design is pure genius. More than that, FAL proved that reliability, accuracy, ergonomics, and adaptability could exist in one package. It is the yardstick by which all other full-power service rifles are measured. But this level is stacked with serious rifles. Germany's h and G3 was the FAL's tougher, meaner cousin, roller-delayed perfection. The FN Scar H brought modern modularity to the legend. America's M1 Grand was the first, the original, the one that beat the Axis. And the Knight's Armament SR25 turned precision into an art form. These five rifles didn't just rule their time, they shaped the very idea of what a battle rifle can be. Absolute legends, every single one.